Okay, so today we're going to be talking about like coding and Python overview, programming basics, turtle graphics, and print statements. And throughout our entire presentation, feel free to ask questions. Either you can either unmute yourselves or ask them in the chat. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be covering is what is coding used for? Yeah, so if you guys have any ideas, maybe you can type them in the chat. Mm -hmm. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. So see, mostly coding is used in uh, making of many apps and games. Yes. What else is it used for? Okay, Adam said website development. Yep. Does anyone else have any ideas? Or app development, yep. Wrong spelling. <laughs> mm -hmm. And robots, yeah, like robotics, artificial intelligence. Yeah. Yep, these are all really good answers. Yeah, so um, now we're going to talk a little bit more about why to learn Python in specific. Um, first, Python can be used across many diverse fields. So it can be used for anything from web development or game development to like we were talking about AI or academic research, scientific computing. Um, it also has relatively simple syntax, which makes it pretty easy and quick to learn the basics of it. Um, there's also a really, really strong Python community. So there are a lot of programmers who program in Python and Python is also open source. So you can really understand every aspect of it. And finally, there's a lot of resources in Python. Um, there are a bunch of different Python libraries that provide you with a lot of tools that allow it to be used in so many different ways. So next thing that we're going to be talking about is integrated development environment or ide for short um, this is where programs are developed um, several offline ids like idle um, there's visual studio and pycharm adam and eclipse and today the ide we will be using is replit yeah so you guys can follow along in repl and I guess if you just go to rupl.it in a web browser, um, this should pop up and you can just click the start coding button and choose Python. And then you can say create REPL and it should bring you to here. So let us know if you have any questions about this. But pretty much on this side is where you can write all of your programs. And on the right side is where it will output like what your the code you're writing. Okay, are there any questions on how to get here?
Okay, so um, just for some programming fundamentals, um, many programming languages will have the following features or functions in common. So often you have an input and output to functions. There are these loops that you can use to iterate over things. And there are also if then or if else statements. And in this workshop, we will focus more on using Python Turtle, which can help you create different graphics through coding and also learning about the print function and different data types. We are going to start with turtle graphics today with coding. So um, turtle graphics is a set of Python functions that allow the user to draw like graphics. Um, and it's based on the logo programming language, which was an educational programming language. Um, and it's from like 1960s, but Python like created their own thing. Yeah. So if you can go to your replit, um, window and type this in first import turtle and then t equals turtle dot turtle parentheses. Um, this is how you begin all turtle programs as you have to import the turtle library. Um, so go ahead and run this and you can tell us what happens in the chat or out loud if you want. Mm -hmm. The name of the site. Yeah, the site name is REPL.IT. I think I might have mispronounced it earlier, but. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. So has anyone had a chance to run this program yet? Yeah. Okay, what happens when you run the this it, new portal? It's sort of canvas. Yes. So it just like pulls up the turtle thing. Um, yeah. Does everyone have the other program working? Let us know if you have any questions about this so far. Mm -hmm. Can you please show that from the first slide about the site? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Here. Um, I can walk through it one more time, too. If you just go to repl.it, you can click this button here. Click Python, create REPL, and then you can write your code here and click the run button here. Okay, thank you. And let us know when you get this working.
Um. What was the fourth line? Um, the fourth line was just like a space thing, but before we move on, I think someone is getting an error, so, um, I don't know. Audrey, what do you think? Um, Maybe if you try retyping it, um, so like take out whatever you have and retyping it, um. You can also try like restarting the REPL thing. Yeah, and check spelling because... I always make spelling mistakes all coming in. It can be done on the other computer, right? Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, I mean, the one who is having an error can do it from the other one. The other computer. Um, so like a different computer? Also, or any problems with this code or questions? Okay, yay. Um, okay, so we yeah. can move on now. Okay. So now we can start learning how to draw with turtle. So if you add this line to your code, you can run it and see what happens. And let us know when you're done. And um, the fourth line was just like a blank line. Um, Sometimes I add it into my code for like readability. Um, so don't worry about the fourth line. It's clear, right? I'm sorry, what did you say? Is it clear? Yes, it's just a clear line. So you could just do like an enter and it'll just have an empty line. Like the second one? Yes, exactly like the second line, yep. Thanks a lot, Anna. No problem. And you don't have to have that space, but I like to do it. Um, yep. Okay, yeah. So when you run this, um, the arrow does move forward. And so we define t to be the turtle in the last slide. So now just by doing dot forward, you can make it move and 100 here is representing 100 pixels on the screen. So did everyone finish running this? And on the code, it was saying error. Um, did you have an error from the code before, or is it just from this line? This line. When I ran the code, it was uh, an error coming in the output area. Weird, okay. Um, I guess check spelling. Um, Anna, do you know? Um, maybe if you put like exactly what you have in the chat, like we might be able to like notice something that's like really minor. Do you have like parentheses around the hundred?
Did you get it to work? Maybe you could send us like what the error message says if there is one. Which you should see like on the right side. Will it work if if we if we change forward into up and down? It won't work, but we'll show you later how to make it move like up or down. Um, you have to make it turn first. I think that's on the next slide. Yeah. Yeah. Should we continue or? Yes. Did you get it to work? Um, Yeah, and there also is a debugger thing on the left. Can I share, screen, to you? Can I share screen to tell you what's happening? Sure, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Just coming in the output area. Um, we can't see your code. Is anything wrong with that? Uh, we still can't see your code. Um, yeah, all we see is like um, a little, like maybe a search just, bar. Just wait a minute, just wait a minute. I sh uh, stop share first. Okay. So um, on your third line, he has an you um have an underscore before turtle on your third line. So if you could take that out and then capitalize the T, it should work. Yes. Now try that. Okay, so now it worked. Yep. Thanks a lot, Anna. I know it did. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, and sorry for uh, that showing of the bar, search bar. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's no problem, yeah. So this is probably what most of you guys see right now. Um, now you guys can try doing this and see what happens. Mm
And if you have any questions about this, let us know. I thought it about showing a type of a stir. Yep, that's probably what it will do, like a stir pattern. Yes. Like this? Yes, yeah. yes. So the T dot left, that makes it turn to the left, and the T dot right will make it turn to the right. So that's why you're seeing this stair pattern. Yeah, and the 90 represents 90 degrees, so you can see it making a right angle. Okay, so now we want you guys to try to draw this rectangle here. So. Go ahead and try to do this on your own and again, ask if you have any questions. And let us know when you're done. Oh, I finished. Great. Is anyone else done? Uh, yeah, I'm done. Good. Is there anyone who's not done? Okay. Yeah. Here's an example of something you could do to make a rectangle. And yeah, maybe you guys made yours different dimensions, but something similar to this. Mm hmm Okay, um, 
Now we're going to add these lines to your code to see what that does. To the rectangle? Yep, just add this on to whatever code you had before. Yeah, I'll go to the slide before, for those of you who are still on the rectangle. Um, what I happened was below the rectangle, no, it made a line. Yep, that's exactly what's supposed to happen, so that's good. Yeah. Is there anyone who is not done with this? Wait for a minute. How does it become a straight line when when there's up and down? Okay, so the pen up, it kind of lifts the um, drawing turtle thing. I don't know. So whenever it moves, like when, after you put pen up, whenever it moves, it will not make a line. And then the go to kind of makes it jump from one place to another and the pen down will put like the pen back down. So I'll allow it to draw. And then the forward makes it like draw a line. Yeah, and for the negative 50, negative 50, you can kind of imagine those as coordinates. So it moves it to the left by 50, then down by 50. And that's why you see it down here. Thank you. Yep. 
has everyone finished this or is there anyone who's still on this slide? Okay, I guess we'll move to the next part. Um, so now we want you guys to try to make this thing where you draw a second rectangle where we just made the new line. And let us know when you're done or if you have any questions again. I'm finished. Good. Is there anyone who is not done also? Finished. I'm not done. Okay, so this is the code and we'll have it here for a few minutes if you want to look um, or a minute or two. I'm done.
Um, for Sydney's question about the line colors being white, that's pretty strange, and I'm not really sure how that happened, but, um, oh, yeah. So here are some other turtle functions. So t.color can change the color of your line. So maybe if you try that, that will change it, but yeah. And for everyone else, here are some other functions that we think you guys, or we encourage you to try. Um, I know someone asked how you would draw a circle. This is how you would draw a circle. And here, 50 represents the radius of the circle. So it's like how big the circle is pretty much. Um, T.color changes your line color. You can write text and other stuff. So yeah, I think that's all we're gonna do for turtle today, but you guys should continue playing around with these functions to see what you can draw. Okay, so any questions about turtle in general before we move on? No. Cool. Um, so now we're going to talk about print statements. Okay, so print statements will print something, like whatever you put in. Um, so now I want you guys to create a new program on REPL and type the following into your new program. It's print parentheses, quotation mark, hello world, and then end quotation mark and end parentheses. And also, if you want to save any of your programs, you can make an account too for on REPL. Um, but to open a new one, you can also just open a new window and do the same thing that we did before. And let us know when you're done. You have to redo the code. Done. First line will contain import turtle, right? Um, yeah, for this one, you don't have to import turtle anymore because we're not using turtle anymore. This is just part of Python. So, so what would be the first line? Oh, the first two lines are just blank. And you can just start this on line one. The blank lines really don't matter. Okay, so you mean that we have to start the code with print hello world? Yeah. Thank you, Audrey. And I think we talked about this a little bit before, but in programming languages, there are a few libraries that you can import that allow you to do stuff that the normal programming language itself wouldn't do. So you know how we typed import turtle um, for the turtle graphics? That was importing a library package that allowed you to do graphics. So there are a bunch of different Python libraries that you can import. Um, that allow you to do a bunch of different things, too. Um, Nothing is happening. Okay. If you print this, um, on the right, does anything show up? When you do this, it should say hello world in the, like, console place. So it won't necessarily bring up a canvas, but it should just print it out. You see it that? did. I forgot to run it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. 
Okay, so variables are um, a way in Python that you could store data values. Like you saw earlier, we did t equals turtle dot turtle or something. So unlike math variables, um, Python vari variables do not have to be just numbers. Um, so here are like two examples. So as you can see, x equals Python is cool. So that's a variable. And then the next one, y equals three is also a variable. And you don't have to add this to your code. Yeah. And you can see how they're written or they're in two different colors, and that shows how they're different variable types, which, yeah. So um, one of the data types in Python are strings, and strings are indicated by using double quotes or single quotes. So how we just printed hello world and how that was in quotes, um, the hello world was a string. Um, and some other data types in Python can be like integers or decimal numbers. Um, string is just another data type. And yeah, so one thing you can do in Python is you can add two strings together. And we often call that string concatenation. So here, down here, if you run this code, you can see that printing hello plus world should result in the same thing as before when we just printed hello world in a single string, if that makes sense. So go ahead and run that and let us know if you have any questions. Will be some of these picks. Sorry, what did you say? Can you please email me some of these picks. Oh, um, yes. I think we can we can probably share the slides afterwards, and this will also be recorded. But would that be helpful? them because uh, in between I left the meeting. Oh, um, well, we just started over. So I think you can just run this without any of the previous code because we're just printing stuff now. Okay. And the recording of this meeting will be on the Code Novate YouTube channel. So you guys could check that out if you want. Okay, did everyone try running this? Okay, cool. So now we want you guys to enter the following code, first equals one, second equal two, and print both of those, and type what you get, or you could say.
Yeah, so when you run this, it should print 12. And that's because, as you can see here, the one is in quotes and the two is in quotes. So they are both strings. And when you add the strings together, it just puts the first string and then the second string right after. So it doesn't actually add the numbers because they're in quotes and they're strings. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, now you guys can try printing this and see what happens this time. And again, if you want to type it into chat or say it. It calculated one plus two to get three. Yep. So now it's like in green. So that means it's an integer and it will like add them actually. Yeah. So now um, you guys could try both of these and maybe like tell us what the asterisks do. Yeah, see if you can figure out what the operations are doing here. It's showing 12, 3, 16, 25. Yes. And as Ashley said, um, the only like one asterisk will multiply it. And if you have two asterisks, it's like power. So um, the five to the second power. Yeah. Okay, now you guys can try printing this. And let us know what you get for this one. Is anyone done yet? An error is coming when I do it. 
So when you run this, you actually will get an error and we will explain why in the next slide. So you can't concatenate a string with an integer. Python like just doesn't like it. Um, so the integers have to be converted to like string format before you add them together. So now if you try this program with the str before five times five, it might give you something different and let us know what you get. Yeah, so you can see this time it did work, and that's because we put this str function around the five times five. And what this str function does is it first allows the five times five calculation to happen, but then it makes it into a string. So if instead we just put quotes around five times five, that wouldn't work either because um, you need them to be out of quotes in order for the actual multiplication to happen. Okay, so now we have two practice problems. So we want you to write a program that displays the circumference and the area of a circle with the radius of five using what you learned today. And if you have any questions, please let us know. Yeah, so you can start by making a variable like called radius and set it equal to five and then try to use all the calculations to print the circumference and area.
Yeah, for Sandra, we can. Um, where do you want to start? Or yeah, when did you join? Okay. okay. So um, we were talking about how there are a few data types in Python and one of those data types is a string and strings are happen when you put quotes around something. So yeah, this is a string is an example of a string. And um, we can add these strings together by doing string concatenation. So for example, if you have print hello plus world, you can just pretty much add the two strings together and these should print hello world um, when you run it. And then if you wanna go ahead and try this, if you set two variables um, first equals to the string of one and second equals to two, but it's also a string. And you can see what happens when you print first plus second. Yeah, so because these two are strings, it doesn't actually add one plus two. Instead, it just like puts the two numbers together. So you get 12. And then if you do this instead, where you just print one plus two, but without the strings, this should give you just three because these aren't strings anymore and instead they're integers. And you can see how the color is different too. So now you could try these two math operators. So this first one with one asterisk should give four times four. So when you want to multiply things, you can use one star. Yeah, so this should equal 16. And then when you do star star, it's not multiplication, but this time it's like exponents. So in this case, five star star two, that is five squared or five times five. So if you want to do five star star three, that should give you five cubed. So it's pretty much like the power function, whereas this is multiplication. And then we pretty much went over how if you try doing something like this, where you try to add a string to an integer number, this would give you an error because these, it doesn't like um, when you don't add two strings together. So in order to fix this, you can run something like this, where you put the answers as a string and also do str around five times five, which makes this a string too, and then this should work. So you should get something like the answer is 25 when you print this.
Okay, for those of you who finished with this program, um, do any of you guys want to share what you did or how you did it? You can either like share your screen or you can just talk through it if you want. Oh, <laughs> that works too. Yeah, cool. So um, if everyone can look in the chat. Yeah, and like Ashley was saying, um, for pi, you can either you just use 3.14 as an estimate, or you can import this math package like we did for turtle. And what this package does is it can give you the exact value of pi. So like she did, um, you can import math and then at the place where you would put 3.14, you can do math.pi to get the exact number. Does anyone have any questions about this or? Oh, yeah. Um, Ashley, you can share your screen. Can you guys see my screen at all? Yeah, we okay. were able to, but not anymore. Okay. Yeah. A lot of code for programming calculators. Yes. Okay. 
Thank you. Continue. Audrey, you're muted. Sorry. Um, so we have one last thing we thought would be fun to go over. Um, but another Python package that's used a lot is random. So you guys can try just typing import random. Sorry. And there's one function in random that allows you to get a random integer, but there's also a bunch of other ones that can just give you random things from a list. So if you type random .ran int. And you can just print that and see what that runs. Oh, oops. Um, can anyone guess what this is doing? It, it's calculating a random number between zero and one. Yeah. So since it's rand in, it isn't doing any decimals. It's just numbers. So you can like make it however big you want and just generate random numbers. Um, and something that this can come into use a lot if you want to make any like simulations or things like that that involve random numbers. So. I guess one quick program you guys can try making is like some kind of rock, paper, scissors game. So if you just make it, you can imagine that like you can assign numbers to the different um, rock, paper, and scissors and just make a quick program that does something like that with this. Um, but yeah, any last questions? How do you save a program? Oh, yeah, you can save it by, I think there's a sign up button somewhere there. If you make an account, it'll save it and you can continue like logging into that account. And then Adam, do you wanna say more about your error or what it's doing? Thank And for Sandra's question, um, a project that I did not too long ago, I made like a number guessing game. So yeah, if you learn about input, you could probably do something like that. Uh, what about you, Audrey? Yeah, um, well, there's definitely a lot I've done with Python in terms of like I've gotten a lot into like AI and more of the like scientific research aspects of it, which can get pretty complicated, but they all rely on the basics and there's a lot of like fun games and things you can make with Python, like Anna was talking about. Adam, do you want to share your screen maybe so we could take a look at your code? And here's what I did again, if you want to look yes. at it.
go back. Okay. <laughs> Does it work now for you? It should just print a number between zero and a hundred. Oh yeah. And I think Ashley just said that she has a number guessing game. So yeah, you can share your screen if you want to share it to us. Wait, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, let's say you're trying to make a code that uses multiple different like components. So let's say you want to use turtle as well as random, etc. Could you do that, or yeah. is it? Can you? Oh, I see. Sure. I see. At the top, you can just have a bunch of imports. So you can say like import turtle, and then next line import random. Mm. Uh, so you can import as much as you want. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Cool. Um, yeah, there's import random and then the while loop to keep the game running and you can change the difficulty settings by inputting it and then it'll ask you for a number and you have a certain amount of turns depending on the difficulty and depending on the difficulty, the range of the numbers that the computer chooses between increases and then way to tell you that like if you win at the bottom and also have like if statements so that way you can quit the game. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's all we had for today. Um, again, like we said at the beginning, there are a bunch of other code innovate workshops coming up like about html and java other languages um yeah you can also we're looking for like outreach ambassadors if you want to join <laughs> and you can visit the website here we also have an instagram and if you have any questions about python or code innovate or anything else here are our emails so feel free to contact us after this but thanks for coming. We hope you learned. Yeah. Stuff. Thank you for coming.